I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that the meeting has been duly called, and that the notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code 551. The time is 6 p.m. Um, item one, invocation and pledges. Uh, Trustee Mr. Sanders, please. All right, if y'all would stand. I'd like to read something before we begin with prayer. This June the 6th of 2019 marked the 75th anniversary of D-Day. It was a milestone that represents the largest gathering, uh, and they had a milestone gathering, uh, the largest gathering of D-Day veterans around the globe this past June 6th. The youngest D-Day vets are now in their middle 90s. A few more years, will be the, we will find the last of them gone. To mark this milestone and take advantage of the opportunities for discussion and commemoration, the National D-Day Memorial in Bedford, Virginia, observed the 75th anniversary with six days of ceremonies, displays, interviews, and much more. Because of that, on June 6, 1944, Bedford, Virginia lost 20 of 32 sons it sent to the invasion at Normandy. It was a devastating blow for the tiny community of just over 3,200 souls. Over time, grief gave rise to solemn pride and deep commitment to ensuring the story of D-Day and its costs and its consequences were not lost on future generations. That commitment, along with the distinction of sustaining the highest per capita D-Day losses, placed the monument to D-Day in Bedford, Virginia, rather than elsewhere in the country. It was dedicated in 2001, and with some 24,000 in attendance, the memorial has since hosted hundreds of thousands of visitors from around the globe. Now I'd like to read to you the prayer, the opening prayer for the U.S. House of Representatives on June 6, 2019, uh, to the U.S. House by Pastor Zach Randalls, if you would bow with me, please. Today, Lord, on the 75th anniversary of D-Day, we remember the sacrifices that were made for our freedom. Lord, we thank you that during times of uncertainty, your loving hands guide us and equip us that we might know what to do. In the midst of orchestrating the details of the universe, we thank you for valuing our individual lives. You are not too busy for us. Your word says you are the God who sees me, what a joy it is to know that. You not only know us, but you just you know just what we should do to better ourselves and to better our world. Speak to us today and give us the courage to trust you. Shine your light in dark places that the truth might be visible and let hearts know and help us to be mindful of you each and every day. I pray this in your holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. All right. Join me in the pledge to the United States flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, and it is law, with liberty and justice for all. And now the pledge to our state flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. All right. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. <clears throat> Item two, awards and recognition. Special recognition, State Citizen, uh, State Citizen B Championship. Dr. Uh, no? Okay. We'll ask Dr. Ted Land, the principal of the Woodlands High School, to come up and introduce our state champion. Good evening. President Williams, members of the board, Dr. Noll, Dr. Sanders, and Dr. Thank you. Summer, summer is definitely here, right? <laughs> it's full force. But um, as you well know, Citizen. excellence uh, in Conroe ISD doesn't take us on vacation. So we uh, we definitely appreciate the time for allowing us to recognize uh, two very deserving students tonight. We're gonna we're gonna start with uh, with the state Citizen B champion, uh, and I'm gonna introduce um, our our coach for that event at the Woodlands High School. Um, he will introduce us to our state champion. Uh, we'd like to introduce you, Mr. Preston Bass. Good evening. 
When I uh, took over the state citizen bee uh, team two years ago, I didn't know much more about it than many of the people in this room do. <laughs> um, it was something that the social studies department had asked me to look into about making this team. And it was something that I thought would give my UIL current events team some additional practice. Uh, but as we delved into this competition and learned what it was really about, um, we realized this was something that could give all social studies departments and all social studies students help. So what the Citizen B does is it tests a competitor, a student's knowledge of U.S. history, something that everybody should know. It tests a student's knowledge of U.S. Supreme Court cases, something else that they should all know. But most importantly, it really just kind of touches on the soul of what we as citizens of the United States should know. So that being said, the first year we dove into this competition, and Augustine, back here, went home with second place, which as far as I know is the highest that anybody at Conroe had ever placed. And we looked at each other that day and we said we were going to come back again the next year, and we were going to win. So this past year, school year, not knowing everything else that had gone on. We dove straight in. Augustine doing his 800 AP classes that he's always done. <laughs> and we started UIL and we started to make plans for current issues. He was right there along the way, not only doing his own bit, but also trying to make the team better, preparing them for the future generation when he won't be there. And so as we went to state again, they pulled me aside as we were getting ready to do the awards presentation and they let me know that Augustine had done something that they had never seen before in their 30 years of doing this competition. He had achieved a perfect score on multiple choice. Um, they had never seen that. And he had almost come this close to getting an entire perfect score. Um, and it was a great accomplishment for somebody that had accomplished so much already. UIL finished second in current issues, fifth in social studies. But the thing that all of this doesn't tell you is that this whole time, Augustine was using this information not only to excel academically, but he did so to become a citizen of the United States. So he accomplished all of this. He's continued to accomplish more. And he has a lot more that he wants to accomplish. With that being said, Augustine for us wrong. Outstanding, outstanding. Make sure I understand that correctly. This this young man knows more about the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just make sure I heard that correctly. You know, we we just gotta do, we gotta do better. For bringing that up one more time. <laughs> uh, hey, it is what it is. All right, next. Uh, uh, sorry about that. Next item, uh, special recognition, um, 2019 UIL class, 6A boy shot put, Dr. No. All right, Dr. Landry, once again, another Highlander to be introduced. Yes, indeed, like I said, we're full of excellence. Um, so it is, uh, it is my great, great pleasure to introduce you um, to the Willems High School head um, boys track and field coach, Coach Juris Green, and our shot put coach, Coach Gary Medor, to introduce us to the 2019 UIL Class 6A Boys Shot Put State Champion. Good evening, everyone. I thought it was just one. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah, I just <laughs> <laughs> I welcome you all. Um, 
Yeah, you've been here a few um, times. There, there's a lot of really cool stats about our track and cross country programs at the Lewins High School, and, and one of those stats that I don't think gets published enough is in my ten years of being the coach, a track coach at the Lewins High School. Minimum nine of those years, we've had a shot putter just to store at the Texas State Track Field. So in terms of events, I think it's appropriate um, that one of the best throws coaches in the United States speaks about his thrower um, to you this evening. That's Coach Terry McGee. Right. Good evening. It's been a, it's a it's an honor to be here to uh, recognize the accomplishments of one of our athletes, um, Patrick. I think I've known Patrick since he's been about five, four or five years. Uh, <laughs> grew up through uh, SCFL, my son. Just just had an yeah, opportunity to see him grow. Uh, it's been interesting. But, uh, some things a little bit about Patrick. He uh, He's a member of both state championship uh, track teams. Uh, something that both of other teams say. <laughs> um, he is, uh, last year he was second in the shot put. And uh, he was, he was determined this year to win the state championship. Um, we, uh, I knew it was going to be a great year. We went to uh, New York City for the <coughs> Indoor National Championship. And Patrick Lasso, he moved first uh, in the shot, 66-3. And uh, the guy that was leading that he beat uh, had throw left, and he had to beat him. Uh, so we were taking second in, in, the, in the nation. Uh, coming back, we went to Rice, uh, and uh, Patrick threw 66-6 there. Which is his all time best. And, uh, it was it was a uh, pretty special special season. Um, leading up into the state championship, um, really exciting. Uh, just to get there as an athlete is phenomenal. Um, it's uh, you're the top nine people in the in the state in your class, and it's not easy uh, to get there. And uh, he's been there three times, and uh, so it's pretty pretty special for him. Um, Going to at the state meet, um, Patrick, uh, his first two throws he fouled, and uh, we were a little nervous because he had to get a legal throw to continue on the finals. So he had to just give a half part of effort to make the finals, uh, which was made the finals, which was good. And uh, we get to uh, into the finals, and uh, Patrick, un unfortunately, now he's throwing second out of nine people. Which gives everybody the opportunity to, to best his throw. Uh, he ends up going to the league uh, in uh, 64 or something, something like that. Um, but then we had to watch everybody else throw. Uh, the last thrower, who was a very good thrower, uh, from Katie Taylor, uh, just missed the after by a couple of inches. But uh, phenomenal experience for him and me and uh, our track team. He's done so much for our, our program, uh, and his family has also. Um, thank you for uh, recognizing him. That's good for this morning. Real quick, on behalf of the board, we want to offer our congratulations to you and our thanks to you for how well you represent this school district. Um, like Coach Green, um, I myself am a proud Islander, and so I feel a, a sense of pride standing here every time our Islanders come up here. I think we're going to have to get the Pippery family some reserved parking. Out front. <laughs> um, you know, it's great that you had an older brother uh, to watch and, and set an example for you, but uh, for you to come into an afternoon in your own right. Um, and not just be his, his little brother, but be, be your own state champion and your own man. We're very proud of everything that you've accomplished, and thank you on behalf of the board. All right. Congratulations, Coach. Hey, congratulations, buddy. Good to see you. Coach, thanks for keeping you guys in line. Appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. All right, let's keep on with that momentum. Item 
Two C special recognition, Dr. No. Okay. Seeing that name on there, <laughs> cut, cut, you cut, cut. Right there. <laughs> it is the Dr. Don Stockton Award. It is so right it is. there. <laughs> Just read. <laughs> All right. uh, as you know, we have a wonderful partnership with EFTA and and uh, our science fair activities um, are a great example of that. But but we do work with EFTA year round through programs in our classrooms uh, and also internships. Um, that go on um, throughout the school year. But tonight we are here to recognize a very special teacher who put in um, a significant amount of work to make sure that all of our science fair activities were successful this year. And to introduce um, our Dr. Don Stockton Award of Excellence Award winner is the president of EFTA, Ms. Monica Baumkamp Emia. Monica? members of the board and Dr. Miller, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here this evening to, um, to speak on behalf of our entire science tech committee. As you know, it's a huge partnership. It is something that takes many, many volunteers, many, many teachers, educators, and obviously the support of you all, you all here. Um, we started last year in honor of Dr. Stockton, who was really a supporter of sci tech and was there from the very first year. We just celebrated our 29th year. So next year will be a, a, pretty, a pretty, pretty great landmark. Um, and our 30th year, um, he clearly was a supporter of science education and hands-on learning, uh, being very much a science teacher probably <laughs> helped with that. Um, and so we, we started doing an award for those teachers who do so much to make it happen. Um, we have uh, an exceptional teacher tonight that we, uh, we are excited to, to honor. Her nominee said about her, um, every year, Yale has contributed much of her time to work with the students and help them complete the district, the state, and beyond. She also helps with science bowl and an engineering design competition. She has placed has had her students place at every level and has been a co-coordinator for the science bowl team that made it to nationals a couple of years ago. She's worked tirelessly with these um, with these students for more than 20 years. She is, holds high expectations for her students while also showing empathy, which you know sometimes when you're deep in science fair, you need a little of that. Um, she also invests time and efforts into building high performance in both science tech and the overall <laughs> grade curriculum. And she really, the absolute this award is about a teacher that goes above and beyond. And so I ask you to join me in recognizing the Paul Well work of the Don Stockton Award. <laughs> I am honored to, to recognize on the behalf of the board. You're going beyond, above and beyond, on, on behalf of your students and, on, and, for, and for the science fair in general. And, and also thank you for all that they do. So it's a, it's a double pleasure to be here tonight. Hey, Corinna, Cheryl, y'all, y'all join here. We'd love to thank you for your efforts too. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. <coughs> thank you so much for what you're doing. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Very nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. As we continue on, um, item two D, special recognition ambassador awards, Dr. No. All right. Um, it's our privilege tonight to recognize a, a great group of hardworking folks that, that help make our school day happen and uh, keep our schools running and, and working to the, the very best of their abilities. And Mr. Caker is here tonight to make those introductions. Thank you, Dr. Nall. Terms of the board, President Williams, uh, 
Dr. Knoll. It is a privilege to continue with our recognitions this evening and recognize our ambassador award winners from the custodial maintenance department. Um, tonight, we are acknowledging their outstanding service provided by custodians, maintenance, and grounds employees and the department's respective honorees. Uh, the department does an outstanding job of maintaining all of our facilities inside and out, and a lot of that credit goes to their department director, Mr. Marshall Schroeder, who I'm going to ask to come forward at this time to recognize the individual ambassador of the Mr. Schroeder. All right. Good afternoon, uh, President Williams, members of the board, Dr. Knoll. Uh, it's a time to recognize uh, two members of the uh, team that were selected as ambassadors of the year. Uh, before I do that, I would like to recognize the members of our leadership team that are here today. Uh, as I call your name, please stand. I'm Dwight Martin, Assistant Director of Mississippi Studies. John Brown, Maintenance Coordinator. Luis Barcenas, Athletic Supervisor. George McCloy, Assistant Coordinator for South Link. And our North Cellular Coordinator, Ryan Michelle. And now to the good part of recognizing the employees that really do the work for this for this for this department. Uh, from North North Maintenance Department, Mr. Candelario Alamos. Uh, please come forward, Candelario. He's been with the district since 2013. Uh, he's a brown from that Kane Creek High School. Uh, he always does well. He goes above and beyond in addressing the overall condition of Kane Creek High School Brown. Uh, performs his job duties with just minimal supervision. He's a team player, works well with all the staff members. Uh, main uh, facility, maintain the facility that can be done. From South Maintenance, Craig McMahon. Craig. <laughs> Craig's been with the district since 2015. He's an HVAC, HVAC technician. He maintains appliances throughout the district, ice machines, you know, washing machines, dryers, and does a great job in keeping that system good condition. From South Cassolio, Mr. Nixon Gidry. <laughs> Nixon has been with the district since 2015. Uh, he's a custodian that works as a day opener at Powell Elementary, has a great attitude, and is always willing to go the extra mile. <laughs> From North Cassolio, Mr. Lorenzo Bernal. <laughs> Lorenzo has worked for the district since 2009. He's an Ethan custodian at Washington Junior High. He's a dependable, hardworking, and, and willing, always willing to do whatever he needs help. Brandon Stiles. Brandon's been with the district since 2013. He's an energy management system analyst. Uh, Brandon is always available to help and eager to assist wherever needed. He continues to grow and expand his knowledge with building automation systems. His attention to detail is beneficial to the district and helps keep our schools in good running order. Next is Matt Pep. Matt has been with the district since 1992. She's an evening custodian at Kaufman Elementary. She goes above and beyond to help wherever she needs. She does the work with a smile and has served the district very well throughout the year. 27 years. Earlier, Dr. Landry uh, talked about excellence, and I submit to you that our uh, custodial and maintenance department is 
not only committed to excellence, but it's probably the most excellent department in the state of Texas, if not the United States. Uh, what you guys do is, is not only create uh, an environment for our students and our, and our teachers to thrive and to teach, uh, but you also uh, continue to create that warm environment. I can't tell you how many stories and how many uh, times I see and observe myself how uh, the department is always reaching out to students and always being there, uh, always being there uh, for us as board members when we come to visit. You, Y'all are the cream of the crop, uh, and on behalf of the board, it is my honor uh, just to recognize you tonight and tell you how, from the bottom of our hearts, how grateful and thankful we are for everything that you do uh, and all the efforts that you take to make this school district great and what it is. So just continue to do that and uh, continue to lead. And again, thank you so much. Okay. All right. Hey. We'll circle, we'll circle around here. Here we go. You're the, you're the leader. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. 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 How much I can handle? I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate everything. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. So many years. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really great. Thank you. 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 That's awesome. You have thank a best really I know. Thank, thank you, sir. Great. Congratulations. Great. I'm, I apologize. Thanks so much. I was trying to memorize the name. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Look at you. Great job. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your pearls. All right, item 2E, citizens' participation. Ms. Goffer, has anyone registered to address the board? No, they have not. All right, outstanding. <laughs> um, item 3, consent agenda. <laughs> uh, consent agenda. Uh, gentlemen, I have n received no request to uh, remove anything, so. I move approval order. of the consent agenda as presented. Second. Okay, I have a motion to second. Discussion, hearing none, all in favor? Thank you, gentlemen. Outstanding. Motion passes unanimous. Um, item four, administration. Dr. Stop, Dr. No, consider <laughs> approval <laughs> of my oh, bad. I'm testing you today. Man, it's on there, man. You gotta take it. You can't put his name on it. <laughs> consider <laughs> approval of uh, campus mascot and uh, school colors for Stockton Junior High School. <laughs> All right, Mr. Colson. <clears throat> President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Noel, tonight we'd like to ask for your approval of the mascot and colors from Stockton Junior High School system. Last month we shared that Mr. Harbaugh Brown, the current principal of Washington Junior High, and the future principal of Stockton Junior High, implemented the mascot selection process. Because attendance zones have not been established as of yet, Mr. Brown solicited nominations from students and families at three campuses that could potentially contribute students to Stockton Junior High School. Campuses included for Bosman, Fryer, and Travis. The submissions were compiled and the top choices were then sent back to the students and families to identify their favorite mascot. Finalists chosen were Stallions, Stingrays, and Spartans. Spartans was the favorite among voters by almost a two to one margin. The recommended school colors are maroon and gray. Picture is a determined looking mascot recommended for Stockton Junior High. Tonight, we're asking for your approval of Stallions as a mascot and Maroon and Gray as a school color for Stockton Junior High School. Mr. President, I move we approve as presented. Well, I'm going to I'm going to second that, even though I'm a Longhorn and this this Maroon <laughs> thing has bothered me a little bit. <laughs> On behalf of Don and 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 uh, Hartwell, I'm going to go ahead and second that. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, we have a motion. We have a second. All in favor. Well, well, firstly, any discussion? No discussion. All in favor? <laughs> All right, motion passes. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, no <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kosher. Appreciate that. Um, next item on the agenda, item 4B, receive capital improvement updates. Dr. No. All right, Mr. Foster. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. No. 
calendar. Yeah, I got it right. <laughs> right. <laughs> it is my pleasure to bring you an update on our capital improvements we have underway throughout the district. We're going to start with Suchma Elementary. Uh, Suchma is scheduled to open in August uh, when the kids come back for the next school year. So you can see from the overhead picture, the, the, the building and site are, are nearing their completion. So at this point, we're installing fence. We're installing getting ready to plant grass in the backyards, things of that nature. We've been working with the county on the west end of this campus to extend Firehouse Road uh, to our new bus drive that's ready to tie in. And the county's making good progress and promises to have our road open where we can use it within the next month or so, which should be well in time for us to train bus drivers and get everything in for the start of our school uh, year next year. Mr. Foster, can you yes, go sir. back just one? The two big areas, kind of at each end, kind of the big far right and big far left, are yes. those parking lots? No, and that's, that's our backyard, so that's part of the fenced backyard, which is the okay. playground area. So oh, we, so those would be the playground. All right, actually, thank you. We, we try to use a, uh, generally speaking, not necessarily a regulation, but a soccer field size area, so yes. we have areas for the kids yes. to, okay. to play in the backyard. So, so that begs the question, where is parking? Parking is immediately in front of the front door, so it, it would be parallel to the bottom of the uh, to Harper School Road for the, the for the where the parents would bring in and drop their kids off, and the teachers' parking lot would be on the right hand side of the screen, uh, right in front of where there's a kind of a, a U shape in the building. That's the, the okay. mechanical yard, and so the faculty and staff and the bus bus loop is on that side of the building. All right, thank you. As you can see here, the details around the front door, the site worker cleaning up nicely on the inside of the building. So last week, we got a chance to tour uh, David and Sheree Shutchma through the inside of the building, and a few, uh, I think Mr. Husbands and Dr. Noll were with us as well. And they'll recall last week, this room of the building was stacked about eight feet high in ceiling tiles on the floor. Uh, so every day marks an, another significant move forward in progress on the building. So you can see now the, the building is, is becoming more and more finished from the fine arts wing through to the classroom rooms. Uh, we're working with our uh, purchasing department will be out there with us later this week to do a logistics uh, meeting because we're looking to receive furniture and fixtures for the building uh, next week. So uh, we've been clearing the commons areas, clearing the gym, things of that nature for that for all those things to arrive so they can be ready to set up as, as the classrooms become ready. So this week uh, we received the carpet for the building. So starting, as a matter of fact, today the carpet installations began. So you can see the classrooms are becoming more and more finished as they, as they move through the building. Again, that's scheduled to open in August of this year, and we're going to be happy to start school when the kids come back in the, in the fall. At Austin Elementary, where we're, we did a building addition, which allowed us to remove some of the older portions of that building from service. So the picture overhead now shows you that the demolition of the older, older building is, is, as of today, the old building is gone. So this picture is about a week old. So now they're working on demolishing the flat work and the slab and things of that nature to get out of the uh, way of that building because the whole area, the, what is now the dirt area to the right of the building you're seeing in the picture is the playground, uh, all the area for the kids to have that outdoor play area, as well as the stacking loop for the parent uh, drop-off and pickup. So we're, the front door of the campus is now at the rear of the property so we can get as many cars off of 105 as possible and create a much, much more safer and easier to operate campus. So you can see from the front door, so we've got the namesake of the building installed and then the, as the details of that building are wrapping up on the outside. So on the inside, you'll see they're ready for carpet and other finishes installation and we'll open that building when, when kids come back for the, for, for the fall in August. At Stockton Junior High, that campus is scheduled to open in August of 2020. <clears throat> and the, the primary goal or the critical path item we're working on currently is the masonry, so the interior and exterior masonry. <laughs> so you can see from this picture, the exterior of the building is com coming along and more detailed of, of what's going on on that building now are building those, those uh, CMU back walls that build up uh, and make our, our very sturdy structure for the buildings. It's so on the inside. The, all more of that masonry work is uh, building, being built around the plumbing chases and the air conditioning and the mechanical rooms, things of that nature. Uh, we're looking at areas of the building where the, the athletics and CTE and the fine arts programs are, so those are the taller spaces that take more time to construct, so, and that's where they've been focusing their time, and then they'll move to the academic portions of the building over the next several months. Moving on to Conroe High School, where we opened a building addition uh, over the winter break, which allowed us to do what we're doing currently. So we've been renovating the second floor of the main building. So this is the status of that, that project right now. So the new finishes and new new interior look of that the main campus is going to be more in like in kind with what we built for the building addition that we opened in over the winter break. 
the classrooms are coming along as well. So the process we're working on are, are the floor to ceiling marker boards, which are applied to the uh, walls that were recently constructed. And then we'll move forward with ceiling grid over the next several weeks. And we'll turn over the second floor for use by the campus at the end of July. So it'll be ready for the for when the students come back in August. But that allows us to work on the ground floor. So we've been working uh, since school got out through the demolition pro pro process. So that process is underway on the ground floor and we'll do the same type of building transformation on the first floor, but we'll be working on that through December of this year. In our life cycle project, which is where we're replacing building systems that have uh, reached the end of their useful life, looking at the uh, finished product of the re-roofed Rice Elementary School here. Uh, and then we put the new metal roof on Giesinger Elementary, uh, recently uh, wrapped up the details on that one. So we've got some cleaning to do on the plaster and everything uh, on the ends of that building to give it a nice new fresh look and we'll be done with that, sec that scope. Um, and then we moved on since school got out, we're starting to replace some air conditioning equipment. So this is chillers and pumps at uh, Armstrong Elementary. And then we've done chillers and are working on chillers and pumps and a boiler for Tuff, and, uh, the Colson Tuff current. That project's on schedule and everything's proceeding just as we had planned over the, over the break. And then uh, the what is moving ahead also are the security infrastructure improvements for the entries at our high schools. All that work is yet to be seen, so it's all uh, above the ceiling into the walls, but we're progressing well on that uh, also. And that is our update. Outstanding. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Any questions? All right, item five, business and finance. Uh, consider approval of 2019-2020 teaching hiring schedule. Dr. No. All right, Mr. Rice, if you will come present this item, please. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll. It is my pleasure to present the 2019-2020 recommended salary increase. We'll begin this presentation looking at our rationale for our pay raise recommendation. And the first off, we want to provide a competitive compensation plan. And this is one of our 2019-2020 budget objectives. And also, this plan is recommended by the TASB Compensation Group. Uh, second, uh, we believe that early approval of the teacher hiring schedule, employee raises, and stipends will improve employee recruitment and, and retention. Um, many of our surrounding districts have re released information regarding their 1920 uh, compensation plan, and some of them have been very aggressive with their plan. Um, we feel it is important for our uh, recruitment and retention of our employees to go ahead and approve this plan. Um, third, this, pr this proposed uh, raise works within our 2019-2020 budget, and it places us in good financial position for the 2020-2021 budget. Um, we've been very conservative, I think, with this uh, recommended proposal, and we're not as aggressive as other school districts. But, you know, we still have some unknowns out there with a potential bond referendum and, and with the 2021 budget out there. Uh, but... One of the things some of the other districts are doing, and Katie in particular, um, they're looking at uh, doing a retention pay or re retention compensation, one-time pay, something like that for their employees. They're actually doing it twice this year. The way I understand it, they'll, they're, they're doing one of these compensation pays in, in August, and then once again, they'll consider one uh, in December. So that is, that is an option that's going to be there for the district if we so find ourselves uh, you know, in, in that area. And then lastly, this proposal meets the requirements as set out in House Bill 3. And please, if y'all have any questions, please chime in and, and, and ask away. I have a, Yes, sir. On the retention pay. Yes, sir. Uh, if we wanted to give one in August or December or January whenever. or whenever. whenever. Okay. Yes, how much lead time, I mean, how much uh, does it have to be an agenda item and voted on? Well, what we will do, it will ask, actually be part of the budget. And we're getting clarification on, on the on the, on the fine legal aspect of it, but it has to be part of the budget that y'all adopt uh, for 2019-2020. And then we will see if we come into December or, or, or January or whenever, um, the board can at, at that time, or, or Dr. Noel can 
can activate that compensation stipend. So it has to be part of the budget. Yes, sir. But we don't have to give it. Right? You don't Indeed. have to. Yeah. It's so, just so you have to put it in the. Uh, that's the question I'm trying to figure. Yes, out. we have to you show have that to we have the ability. The budget, and then we vote whether to actually grant it or not. Right. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Is that true, Carrie? I just want to make sure. I think it depends on how you word it. So you yeah. could delegate that to the superintendent to determine based on the financial condition of the district. You know, it, it would depend on how we put it in the budget item. But it has to be in the budget so that it is compensation part of people starting their contract year. Accounted for. Thank you. Okay. And then fourthly, uh, this proposal meets the requirements as set out in it. House Bill 3, and just wanted to walk y'all through once again, uh, House Bill 3 requires districts to utilize 30% of their increase in their foundation school program funding to provide salary increases for full-time employees other than administrators. Of this amount, 75% must be used for full-time teachers, counselors, li librarians, and nurses. Uh, so looking at our minimum requirement calculation, and, and we have got a lot of clarification over the last week from TEA, so we're very confident in our calculations now. Our, our uh, FSP increase, $22.9 million. We must spend 30% of that on these raises, and that 30% is $6.8 million. 75% of that must be allocated to our teachers, counselors, librarians, and nurses. That 75% is $5,156,000. Uh, the remaining 25% may be used uh, for the remaining full-time employees, excluding administrators. So that's at a minimum what we're required to do by House Bill 3. But before we get into that, I would just wanted to touch base with you with an uh, updated pro forma on our budget based on House Bill 3 with the uh, uh, latest clarifications that we have and, and understandings. Um, as you can see, our estimated total revenue is now $540.4 million. Uh, Including the raise that we're recommending, our estimated expenditure increase is $38.4 million, giving us a uh, total estimated expenditure budget of $533.86 million. That will leave us with potential available funds of $6.54 million, and we feel that that, put, that leaves us in good position going into the 2021 budget. Uh, you know, this budget that the state does is over a biennium. So we need to make sure that we don't spend it all in the first year and don't have any for the next year to give uh, appropriate raises to our employees. Any questions on, on that? So this is our recommended salary increase uh, for our teachers, librarians, now nurses and counselors, and we included pay grades AE levels one through three. That will be a 3.5% uh, increase at a cost of $8.1 million. In House Bill 3, we must dif have differentiated pay for teachers with six plus years of experience. Uh, we're recommending $200 for this. That is a cost of $600,000. For our pay grades AS, IS, Auxiliary and Police, this is primarily our non-exempt employees, a 3.5% increase at a cost of $2.4 million. For pay grades AB and AE levels four through 10, a 3% increase at a cost of $2 million for a total uh, increase to our salaries of $13.1 million. And if you will note, I do have the asterisk down at the bottom just to say that the pay plan includes possible retention compensation. So that is just there. It gives us that flexibility now at this point that if you ever consider that, we can move forward. Okay. Right. So, I, no, please. No, please. Um, so for that first group of uh, pay grades AE 1 through 3. Yes, sir. Uh, if those positions on a campus happen to be funded, say, by Title I or some other funding source, is the campus going to have to increase their amount of Title I spending to match the raise, or is the district covering Yes, that cost? will come out of Title I. Okay. Yes, sir. If they're grant funded, it will come out of Title I. Okay. Okay. Well, you said it had to be in the budget. You said here that it's footnoted. <clears throat> Well, we're not adopting the budget tonight. I understand. We just have to footnote it tonight just so that it is in the compensation plan. But literally, before we adopt the budget, we have we to put have a number to. in there. Yes, sir. Okay. I, I just, what, just, or sorry. does it have to be a number? I, I know we're not. We're, we're still getting clarification tonight, on that, but, but, but yeah. We don't think okay. it has to be a number. Yeah, in order to, um, to give you the option of that in the future, it had to be included in the pay plan presentation. So that's why that asterisk is there tonight. And then it has to be a line item in the budget. <clears throat> Uh, in the future for that to be an option. We won't have to, we are getting clarification if we have to have an exact percentage because we want, that'd be a flexibility potentially for the future. So, I think Mr. Uh, Inman had a question. Yes, sir. 
Mr. Rice, I, I, at the top it says 3.5 for the teachers, and right below it, teachers with six. So the mm -hmm. teachers, let's say, with seven, they'd get 3.5 plus a 200 Yes. Type and kicker is that yeah. what I'm yes saying? yes okay that's what I yeah and, and and I'll and I'll show you the uh, uh, the next slide is our teacher pay scale one second yes sir okay. I'm sorry Mr. Sanders yes. I I had a question I thought last uh, workshop we looked at we were looking at three and a half Plus. three and a half and two and a half I, I don't I, that was the number I had in my head because it was one point six and now it's two million. For the pay grades A, B, and A, E, four through ten, am I missing something? Uh, that was a discussion item. We shared that as a as, as a, a potential, item. and it certainly right. this this is a <coughs> your your discretion. Whatever you would have us to do, it just looks do. different than the last one I saw. That's why I'm asking. I think we did present this one as well. One of the concerns associated with the one percent gap between um, <coughs> was that we would be we would create um, compression some compression within our pay scales so like if if uh ae3 was to get three and a half and ae4 got to received a two and a half percent raise they may actually pass ae4 which would then create some compression within our um, entire pay scale we can make any adjustments that you see fit um this is what was shared uh, i remember that discussion yeah. as well okay i just didn't know who was bumping who I don't know that I ever got clarification. So you're saying the threes and the fours are the ones? I mean, if it's as simple as that, couldn't you just make some stipend adjustments to correct that rather than moving the whole class? That's all I'm thinking about. If you if you all choose to do two and a half on the, that bottom group, then certainly we would go in and make adjustments. We'd probably have to make adjustments more than in just four because four and five would have some compression. But we could make those adjustments. It would just be some smaller adjustments to be made along the way. But we could do that, yes, sir. Let me let me ex explain a concern of mine, okay? Right now, you know, uh, if you flip back to the budget, I, I can't remember, memorize the number, the 6.54 million, okay? I understand that, you know, we give raises every year. Mm -hmm. The state of Texas is trying to correct those that, I mean, you know, Literally, they're trying to correct those that, that have never gotten a raise and they're still at minimums and so on and so forth. And I don't begrudge teachers anything. They, they deserve more than we can afford to pay, period. End of discussion. But the $6.54 million, I take it as a, you know, you're saying it's, it's a biennium decision, you know, and, and we've got another tax break coming and, uh, or tax reduction, compression, whatever we call it, okay? And what I'm not clear on is exactly, I mean, when we go down seven cents, what does that do to us financially? Because just the teacher raises is just one, all the allotments and what is that what you call them, allotments? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, how is that all going to, are we confident? I mean, you're the master of mm -hmm. the school finance program prior to them changing it. I'm not sure there exists a master now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, who knows when the other shoe's going to fall? Oh well, we didn't tell you about that, but that's gonna hit you for another two million here or whatever it is. Okay, mm -hmm. you know it's coming. I know it's coming. It's just a matter of where it shows up, you know, because they they forgot they didn't they didn't they didn't consider it. Mm -hmm. Let me put it for lack of better ways to put it. So, is the six point five four million? I mean, is a shot in the dark that it's enough to cover the the unknown? Is it? Uh, I mean, because when we give salary increases, they're forever. You know, I'm, I'm not using the, the what do you call it? I know I want to call it something else, and I'm not supposed to. So what is it? Compensation the, stipend? Uh, yeah. No, the retention. Retention. The retention, retention. retention payment. Yeah. Because we can't call it the, the other thing. Right. Okay, so I guess what I'm trying to say is here we got $6.54 million that that is, you know, uh, available funds for the following year, mm -hmm. whatever that is. It's full, okay? We've got unknowns, okay? And while I want to give three and a half, four percent raises, just like, you know, some of these school districts, but this is not the whole picture. You haven't shown me what, when we drop the tax rate or compress the tax rate, mm -hmm. okay, what exactly is that going to do to us? And then you add up all the allotments and show me what the, what the, Program, you know what the what the revenue is, mm -hmm. and and where are we? That's it. Right? You you understand? 
Are I asked the question are you, are, you, are you asking for next year with the additional compression that we might but face? Not just next year. What I'm saying is you're asking us to make a decision on teacher raises tonight, mm -hmm. but I don't know what the overall plus or minus is to what the whole program did to us. Uh, you, you understand, are we up or are we down? You're showing me $6.54 million, and I'm sure you've got all the revenue sources that you think are coming in that 502 or 540, excuse mm -hmm. me. But, I mean, is it higher or lower? Are we up or are we down? We're up We're as up. compared to where we would have been under current law. Yes, sir. Okay. And we will be up next year as compared to current law. And how much? And uh, this year we're up, well, you know, if you look at our calculation, it showed $22 million, but we're actually up around $38 million compared to where we would be under current law. Now, the calculation that we have to do under S F FSP for that calculation is different, but we're up about $30 million where we were, if you, when you, if you remember my pro forma that I showed y'all, you know, where we were negative uh, yeah. six million million that, a few months ago. That's the, that's so, the so we are up, and we are going to be ahead uh, in 2021 as compared to where we w would be under the law prior to House Bill 3. Okay. So with this $6.54 million, mm -hmm. and not all the decisions are made, retention or otherwise, yes. yet, but what other decisions do we need to make with this? Uh, what other caveat? Because if I vote on 3.5% for teachers and I'm still staring at $6.54 million when we were at negative $6 million before the, the change, then I'm thinking maybe you know we ought to we ought to be looking at something maybe different. But if there are other shoes to fall, you know, other requirements for that money, I don't know about. It. I think within what we're presenting here tonight, it we are co we are covered. Everything is in that we could possibly need in in the budget. I do not I do not you know force. So, we're, we're all in as far as revenue, as far revenue. as pluses and minuses of a House Bill 3. You're confident that these numbers are final yes, numbers? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and do we know in retention if we gave everybody a, an amount of money? I don't care. Just make it 1%. 1%, $100, whatever. I mean, we can, we can extrapolate. But do we know what that's going to cost. 1% of what? Oh. Midpoint. Midpoint. Other, yes. Yeah. One percent of the midpoint of their be like job category. I mean, yeah, for so they may or may not it'd be, be in the five hundred dollar range. Work. Exactly. That, that's the way Katie's structuring their one lump sum payments. Okay. We have to give a minimum. So, what's the delta between the minimum and what we're actually we're actually proposing? Yeah, okay. So, okay. I, let me. I, I'll have to unhide it. Yeah, yeah, agree. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We have we have that available for you. Okay. He's going to be able to pull it up. And I, and I share uh, uh, Mr. Husband's concern. Well, you see, I mean, I don't want us to be behind what districts are doing, and yet, you know, I'm I'm concerned that everything's so new that that, that all the all the unknowns aren't out there financially. Yet, mm -hmm. Okay, and. We've had unfunded mandates before. Okay, so we're going to compress this tax rate by seven cents, but and here's your twenty million, but it just doesn't quite add up the same way. By the time all the allotments are taken away and given, right? Okay, we, they we change. Yeah, well, and we do feel like that. What we're representing, and not, you know. Yeah. Well, my concern is if we don't have a, a um, bond proposal for the voters in November, or if the bond proposal does not pass in November. And we have to prioritize. What, what does that put us? You know, um, what flexibility? What, what, what levers do we have? Assuming we take this approach, mm -hmm. that, that's my mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay, Sorry about that. This is uh, the minimum salary increase as required by House Bill Three. That. that that we have. It would include teachers, librarians, nurses, and counselors uh, receiving a 1.9% raise at a cost of $4.6 million. Since we have to do the dif differentiated pay for the teachers with six plus years experience, we still had the $200 there uh, per teacher. That would be a six, uh, $600,000. Those totals $5.2 million. If you go back to the slide that we had when we did our calculation,
you can see the min the, the minimum uh, minimum for teachers is, is right at five point two million. So then all others, uh, ex excluding administrators, uh, would receive a two point four percent raise, and that's about one point seven uh, million dollars total. Would be six point nine million dollars. That would be the minimum as required by House Bill Three. Okay, so that's six point nine. And what you recommended was 13? 13. 13. Mm -hmm. Can we see that? 13.1. Yes, sir. Well, what I hear you saying based on your analysis is that this is still a conservative number. I feel it's conservative. And yes, based sir. on all the research analysis that you've done, you feel like this is a safe number, and and, and working with TASB right. compensation group, you know this this is based off of their recommendation also uh, for the race. Yeah, the, yes, sir. TASB is interested in keeping the salary structure straight. Sure. Okay, I'm interested in keeping the district solvent. Okay, and solvent is a is a is a big right term, but I mean. Now, I don't want a deficit budget because we didn't take something into account. Yes, sir. And on the other hand, I don't want to not give an appropriate raise. I mean, it's two-sided. I don't want to give a raise that's not appropriate to the marketplace. <clears throat> I mean, I'm hearing crazy numbers out there, and I, or, I, I, just, I, I frankly don't understand how they can afford to well, do it well, true. when I know how financially at, uh, well off we are, or well managed we are, not well, well off, well, but... Well, at, as we've done in the past over the biennials, when we've had this same situation, this, this board has never spent all the money they got. One of the few boards that make that decision to be conservative and save money for that second, uh, second year of the biennium. Uh, we've done that traditionally. It, it is very smart on your part to do that because we don't end up with the school districts when that second part of the biennium, they're adopting deficit budgets. This budget, we will not have a deficit budget next year unless there's a catastrophe or something that, that is well, just out of our control. Or we give another raise that we don't have the money for. I mean, just like we could give a raise this time we don't have the money for. I mean, I mean, you say... I feel very confident that, 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 that we will have the funding I, I didn't, to, I, to handle it. I didn't mean yours. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. Um, That's good. Oh, just, just, and I know things have changed, but just historically over the last three, four years, what have been our increases? In 2018-2019, we gave a 2.5% raise for professional staff and a 3% raise for non-exempt. In 2017-2018, we gave a 2% across the board raise for everybody. That was an $1,125 raise for teachers in 17-18 and a $1,450 raise in 18-19. So to kind of, I know things have changed, but to kind of reiterate what you're saying, we've we played it conservative and kind of played it steady, mm -hmm. and that's what you are recommending. We can as well as we continue to play it. We're giving a, a nice increase, mm -hmm. but we're still playing it steady. Yes, sir. Okay. So this is our recommended 2019-2020 teacher hiring schedule. Uh, it in, uh, has a teacher uh, starting salary of $55,500. Uh, has a 3.5% general pay increase. Every teacher will receive a $2,000 uh, increase in their salary. As you can see, teachers with six plus years experience uh, will receive an additional 200 so their total raise will be $2,200. And on the midpoint, I think that works out to about 3.85% raise for those teachers. Uh, Mr. Rice, what is like learning coaches, as we mentioned before in our last board meeting, do they fall in that second tranche? If, it depends if they are campus-based or if they're district-based. So a campus-based instructional coach, if they're, if they're paid on the teacher pay scale, then that's where they would go. A district-level coach, they're in that... Um, AE pay scale those one through three boxes that would be in that 3.5 percent all right um, but I mean, only yeah. only the teachers would have this additional two hundred dollars only those administrators pay. they don't get the 200 though if they're district wide Understood. correct yes sir okay. mr. rice do you have a 
like something like this that shows other area schools that are comparable to us? I know it sounds like an awful lot of work. I mean, do we know what comparable well, schools are paying their people and what their assistance is? Yes, are? sir. I mean, that, that is Not one of the things. And, 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 you know, we, we appreciate Mr. Sanders being on the committee that meets with TASB, and we go through okay. all of our comparable districts, and we look at all the all the pay structures that they have, and we, uh, we do have it. I don't have it available for display tonight, but we do have all that information I'd be willing to. Perfect. And, 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 this, and this with... You know, from TASB, this keeps us, you know, competitive with those districts. And, and the outstate and the uh, years of experience that includes, of course, if they come from another district. Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Yeah, we want to make Texas. sure that was in there as well. Texas. Yes. Anywhere in Texas, very good. And yes. we expect to see a lot of variation. Obviously, as everybody's adopting their their budgets, these or these their pay plans these next few months. As Mr. Husband's mentioned, we're seeing some districts with large percentages. I think when we get to September, October. We're going to be able to get an idea of where did we land as compared to everyone, and that's where that potential retention idea could come from, or at the very least, um, a conversation about setting the 2020-2021 pay plans earlier than we typically have, potentially in March or so of next year, just to so that we can respond at that point to the moving ahead. Um, but we do feel like we've left money in the budget to allow us to respond in the future if need be. This might be a small universe of population of people, but President Williams, you just said if they taught in Texas, so a teacher coming from another state, moving to our district would not get this as a tenure teacher? Ms. Sharples? My understanding is you have to buy those years. Yeah, if they have to verify their service mm -hmm. with the state Texas, but they could get that service credit. If they're from another state? Yes. Okay, I, I know it's a small population. They need to have yeah. a teacher come in in 15 years and say you don't get yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And one other question, mm -hmm. would it be a potential option, talking about versus the retention, you know, mm -hmm. where it's left open for discussion and so on and so forth or vote or whatever, would it be possible to up the additional adjustment for six plus year teachers? Because mm -hmm. I've always had a problem with, I mean, I'm sitting here looking at one that's been here I didn't know she was that old but anyway I was just picking on you but um, I just I mean she's uh, I just I've always had a problem with you know in teaching 25 years in this district and it's just two hundred dollars mm -hmm. what that's worth yeah. every every, yeah. every hundred dollars would cost us about three hundred three hundred thousand so if you wanted to do you know, five hundred instead well, of two hundred. All, all to be an I wanted to do was make that two hundred one percent, which we already talked about. It's about five hundred odd dollars, right? Yeah. That would be my. That would be. I'm not even sure. I'm recommending that. Yeah. One per one percent is about five hundred dollars, right? Yeah. Almost. A little over. Yeah. A little five, over. Seven, yes, eight, something like that. Five eighty. And all I'm saying is yours. Yours six plus or whatever. Uh, that I, I've always been for. I mean, those people have shown. Longevity in the teacher business, the they don't necessarily the longevity business. here, but mm -hmm. longevity in the teacher business, and, and and they have put in the years, and I'm just saying that I would a whole lot rather give that to those, to that in, in that column than I would a retention bonus of, you know, save your Christmas money out of out of your increase. Uh, that's all I can tell you. Mm -hmm. Do a little better job of budgeting, and let's let's go ahead and do it straight up. So, so I feel comfortable in suggesting or recommending that we adjust the $200 additional adjustment for six plus to whatever 1% is, $500, rounded just, off, just round it 550 off whatever it is. Okay. 1%. If I could just throw this in for discussion, I really like what you're saying there, Mr. Husbands, but what if we did like from years six through, and I'm just, I'm just spitballing now, six through nine, 200, 10 through 12, 400, 13 through whatever, 800. But if you look at like year 15 versus a brand new teacher, that just doesn't look right to me. To me. You well, mean 5,000 more. And it never has. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I wonder that's, if we can maybe stair-step those up also as we go up the scale. Instead well, of across the board, I mean, maybe stair-step. That teacher's been here 10, 12 years. But technically. $1,000 increase, maybe. But, they don't but the, the real stuff. problem is if you have a, a great teacher and, and an average teacher teaching side yeah, by side, and they're 25 years, they're, they're making the same thing. Uh, you know, that's what's really confusing about it. Well, yeah, that's what I'm looking at. That, that's an option. Does this, does, this, does this disrupt the parity between, because this is just for teachers, librarians, and librarians and nurses, all other staff on the campus, does that, does that call? No, sir. I mean, we, we, we've looked at the $500 option 
just anticipating that perhaps somebody might make that suggestion. Um, Darren and I are confident that that's a number that the budget can hold. It will not affect our pay plans in a negative way. Uh, Mr. Emmon, to your, to your point, just to kind of clarify, these teachers don't automatically take the next step each year, which is the other confusing part of this. This is simply just a hiring scale. Mm -hmm. So oh. next year, they won't automatically make the next number. They'll make whatever they make this year unless you choose to give them a raise next year. So it's I see. this is just a one-year picture. It's not a, a long-term. So it's, it's a little confusing. It took us about five years to get this square, and it still has places where we have There's to a few. change them you know, mm -hmm. up a little bit or something. Yes, sir. That's what TASB is, came in and restructured just about 12 we years ago, right? And... But anyway, uh, yeah, I stand by that recommendation because, frankly, I think all teachers work hard. Uh -huh. I hope they're all working hard, but they are I, the ones I know are, mm -hmm. and I would I would recommend that we go with a one percent what in whatever round well, it can we round it to five hundred? Is, is that round, round yeah. to five hundred in that okay. category and, and give it all give it give it all to them rather than you know worry about whether we have to vote for something in December or not. Let's give it to them right now. Okay. So so is the discussion keeping with what y'all are recommending and then adding three hundred dollars to each of this. To, to a 500 that's, that's what, the way i understand that's what, that's what, that's what i'm going back to it'd be about a million dollars i think slide. is what you said be roughly a million yes sir yeah it'd be it, 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 roughly that second line would be a million dollars uh, uh additional and be 1.6 million and i know i was just asking questions about i, I told you it was both sides i mean yes. I, I, you, you you're confident that yes that we're, we're not in yes not going to have the other extreme shoe drop extreme then dollars. in that case you know i'm i'm yeah. for doing more so mr husband's in it you're, you're saying do that in place of the 200 retention well so yes I, I would much rather give it to That's the six plus saying. year right. teachers so not entertain the retention yes we well I, I would recommend that we hold, hold we that keep the retention open. because give you an option we don't want just in case we come to august and and, and i'm just and every district out there gave 10 percent raises and we get our find ourselves way behind we might need that flexibility you know in Put it in the budget. We're not it's just in. flexibility. It's, so we're not locked into it. It's just flexibility. Approval. Subject to, to board that approval. approval. Absolutely. Yes. I, yes. I think as, as a board, yeah. that's our responsibility. Yes, but exactly. It's a budget but, item. But it gives but, you all that flexibility. But what I'm saying is, I, yeah, I think I think it's it's better for them to, you know, for hiring. I mean, I know a lot of the hiring's done, but but again, they deserve to know, and uh, and and they certainly work hard for us. And so I'm I'm for I'm for taking one of those. And, and and even if we took one of those retentions out of there for all, you know, left the one in for one in, and when you do it, doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. But if we, you know, if you were talking about August and in December, is one school district did, but if we took <coughs> one of them away and put it in that, made that five hundred, right. and left one of them in just so you'd have your options. Sure, open, I'm all uh, it, it uh, with exception for board approval. Yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely doable. Well, I don't know. We need to make a motion, or yeah. One last question. I should know this, but what what category is those that are the deal with the special needs? Is it, it just in one of those two first categories? Yeah, they'll be in one of the first two. I don't. The Sharples, do you know? They're, they're in the teacher category. They're in the teacher category. Okay. Do they make a stipend too, though? It depends on the position. Yeah. Now, one, now that, that, is, that is one thing I would like to just point out. You, you brought up stipends. We are recommending increasing the bilingual stipend uh, by five hundred dollars, going from four thousand to forty five hundred. But it's in your number. On, on it your is in our number. Yeah, everything is in in, in the numbers. Um, and then also we're uh, increasing or, or creating a new stipend. And, and remind me of the. Of the hard to fill special education, we are going from a thousand to two thousand for next. Yeah. Okay. Sure. And, that, and that, again, that's for hiring competitiveness. Right? Yes, yes, sir. Absolutely. And paraprofessionals are captured in that third line. Yes, sir. Yes. Did you say third line or second? Line? Oh, I mean, okay, third. Line. Yeah. Third line. yeah. Third line. The, the ASIS auxiliary employees. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, in terms of a formal amendment to this motion, is that are you are you are you finished with the? I am. I am. Okay. Recommending <laughs> your approval. I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt it. And, no. All right, gentlemen. We, we are. Presentation. We are complete. Well, I guess that was discussion. Does anyone have a motion? So do you want? I to move that we approve the recommended salary increase as stated: three point five, three point five, and three point zero. And in addition, instead of the teachers with six years of experience being two hundred dollars, increase that to five hundred dollars. Okay, gentlemen. We have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. 
Do have a second. Any further discussion? I just want to make sure that we're clear that it's a we're leaving a possible one-time retention pay with board approval. Agreed. Gentlemen? Yes. Any further discussion? All right. All, the motion's been heard. We have a second. All in favor? All right. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for your hard work, Derek. Good discussion. Appreciate the uh, input of everyone. All right. Item uh, 5B, receive financial reports. All right. Let's start to know. Break it. All right. I'm here this evening to present the financial statements of the district for the month of May. These statements will include our general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. Uh, the first uh, statement we'll look at this evening is our balance sheet. Our balance sheet includes our assets and liabilities of the district. Each month, we like to take a look at our cash and investments. Concentrating once again on the general fund, you'll see that we have cash on hand of $500. Uh, we have deposits in the bank of $514,000. We have investments with the state pools of $87 million. Investments with Wood Forest National Bank of $121.7 million. Our, inv our longer-term investments with TCG Investment Advisors, $51.3 million. For total cash investments in the general fund of $260.55 million. <laughs> Taking a look at uh, property tax collections. Um, property tax collections are in line with where we expect them to be for the year, so we feel good about that. Now taking a look at our income statement, our income statement includes our revenues and expenditures for the district. Our revenues are broken down into three categories, local and intermediate sources, state program revenues and federal program revenues. Taking a look at the detail of our local and intermediate sources, you can see that property taxes is the largest generator of revenues in our general fund and debt service, its food sales and child nutrition, and its premium contributions and self-funded insurance. We can also look at our year-to-date expenditures by major category for each of the funds. This is our 2015 bond referendum status, and if you'll look at those percent completes, we're getting very close uh, to wrapping, uh, wrapping this bond referendum up. As you can see, we've uh, had funds expended and encumbered of $501.4 million. We have an estimate to complete still on the books of $19.7 million, giving us a projected forecast completion amount of $521 million, and that'll leave us with about $7.4 million worth of contingency in the program. Uh, Self-funded insurance, uh, still performing very well. Total revenues for the year, $37.4 million. Uh, total expenses, $35.6 million. So revenues under expenses, about $1.8 million. Um, we, we're crossing our fingers that that's a hold up, that'll hold up for the rest of the summer. Uh, Participation at our wellness centers remains strong, and we're averaging 553 uh, visits a month. Investments for the month. Par value of our portfolio is $416.5 million. Uh, the pools are yielding us 2.56%. Uh, Wood Forest National Bank is at 2.62%. Our longer-term investments with TCG Investment Advisors has a WAM of 332 days, and we're yielding 2.11%. Uh, leaving us with a co combined portfolio that has a WAM of 37 days, uh, yielding 2.53%. And our benchmark, which is the 90-day T-bill, is at 2.31%. Thank Great you. Job. Questions? So the, that, that was as of May 31, right? Yes, sir. Those rates, okay. Yes, sir. Because I noticed rates continued to move down. The two-year was 187. Wasn't really. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Thank you, gentlemen. Further questions? All right. Item uh, six, executive session. A closed session of the board will now be held on matters contained in notice of in the notice for this meeting as authorized by section 551.074551.0072 and 551.071 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Should the board determine that a final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regards to any matter considered uh, in such closed or executive meeting or session, uh, then such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be had at either the public meeting, this public meeting upon reconvening of the public meeting, or at a subsequent public meeting upon board, a subsequent meeting of the board upon notice thereof as the board <laughs> shall determine. A closed session of the board will now be held. Uh, it is 
7.14 p.m. All right. The board is now in open session. You know, some of that joke. 7.43, the time is 7.43 p.m. All right, gentlemen, we have a motion. I have a motion having completed the superintendent's evaluation. I move the board approve amendments to the superintendents, including a 3.5% raise. Gentlemen, we have a motion, we have a second, any discussion? All in favor? Motion passes unanimously. I have another motion. I have a motion to adjourn. We have a motion. 